Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Ultra Sign Up Race Timer. If you're planning to use the Race Timer for the first time to time your event, then please watch this video and also head over to help.ultrasignup.com where you will find um, tutorial videos that break down everything that I'm going to go over in this quick video. On help.ultrasignup.com, you will also find a guide that I created that explains how to test the timing app prior to your event. So I encourage you to utilize that resource as well. And best practice is to start maybe a couple weeks prior to the event. That way, should you have any questions, you can reach out to the Ultra Sign Up team and we can help you out. So let's get started. After your registration closes for your event, you will assign your bibs and generate your code for the app. After that's done, you can download the app from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and then enter your code into the app so that all of your participant data is carried over. So we'll go ahead and enter our code HAFD. New reset, yes. So the first screen that you will see is your keypad view. Um, from the keypad view, all you have to do is key in the runner bid number and click the green add button. If you start to key in a number and you're keying in the wrong bid number, all you have to do is click the clear button to clear it out and start all over. After the runner is recorded, they're going to appear at the bottom of the screen where you see Amos Diggory. If we click on this record, then it opens up participant details. Uh, and also, if you look at the top of the screen, you have two options. These are tabs. So you've got details and you have checkpoints. So if we click on checkpoints, we can open. If you click on the finish time, you can open up the time and adjust it as needed. Uh, then don't forget to click update after you've made your adjustments. You can also delete the result from this screen as well. In the top left corner, you'll see a back button and that'll take us back to the keypad view. Some other things that you'll see on this page, you'll see a list of your distances. So in this case, I only have one distance. It's the 50 miler. And so if you have multiple distances, they would be in a list here. Um, and on the right side of that gray bar, you'll see the start time. So if you have multiple distances, you can adjust the start time for each individual distance. So if everyone's starting at the same time, let's say they start at 6 a.m. and it gets off to a late start and you need to adjust it by five minutes, you'll need to adjust the time for each individual distance. So if you click on it, that opens up this modal where you can make your adjustments. Um, and obviously, uh, don't forget to click update so that it saves. And then you'll see that the time has been, the start time has been updated for the distance. Another thing that I didn't go over when I recorded the first runner, we'll just go ahead and start keying some people in so we have some recorded data. But if you'll notice, notice as I'm keying folks in, you can see their name and location at the top in the green bar, which is useful if you have someone announcing. And then in the top right corner, you can see a menu icon and a search icon. If you click on the search icon, it opens up this screen where all of your runners are listed. If you click on a runner or search for a runner, you can open up their participant details from here as well. If you click on the box next to status at the very top, you can set this runner as it did not start or did not finish. If you accidentally set someone as did not start or did not finish, you can select the empty box and that puts them back into the event. Uh, and then also you can adjust checkpoint details from here as well. So heading back to the keypad view and doing so by clicking on the arrow, the back arrow in the top left corner of the screen. If we click on the menu, the first item in the menu is bib tab. So let's go there. From this screen, it will display all of your bibs and you can simply tap to record the runner's finish time. 
Um, you'll also notice that in the left corner under the red bar that says finish line, you have your distance and your start time as well. And if you click on that, you can adjust the start date, the start time, just as you would from the keypad view. Again, don't forget to update your adjustments and um, so that your changes are saved. So let's record a few more people from here. So then we're gonna go back to the menu. And the first option is keypad. That's how we can navigate back to the keypad screen. The next option is gonna be results. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. That opens up this screen. This is gonna show your overall results. Um, as you can see at the top of the screen, there is a 50 miler tab. So if we had more distances, we would have a tab for each distance. At the very bottom of the screen, you'll see four more tabs. We've got overall, age, gender, and remain. Under overall, obviously that's gonna be your overall results. Age is going to be your age group results. Uh, so it's a good way to quickly and easily find your top three finishers in each age group if needed. Um, and our age groups only go from, or in, in 10 year increments. So it would be 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and so on and so forth. Um, then the next tab is going to be gender. So you can find your gender specific results. And then the last tab is remaining. So these are all the folks who are remaining on the course. So heading back to the previous screen, let's click on the back button in the top left corner. And the next option is going to be view by in the menu. So you can sort your bibs here by bib number, by last name or by first name. And going back to the menu, the next option is tools. Under tools, you have the ability to add a participant. Um, and to go back. So if you have race day registrations, uh, you can add your participants there. The next option is change participant status. This is a screen specific to updating um, DNS, DNF. So at the start of your events, if you have a, a, a number of people who didn't start, you can go ahead and start keying in their bib number and updating their records accordingly. You can also kind of burn through your DNFs if you have them um, using that tool as well. Uh, then you can also change them back again, as I showed you earlier when um, editing participant details. If you select the empty box rather than a DNS or DNF, that puts them back into the event. Um, and then the next item. So the next item under tools is race clock. If we open this up, you have your race clock. If you have a screen that you can cast to, you can use this in place of a digital race clock. So it will count down to the race start and then start counting up after that. Going back to tools, the next item is data backup. You click this periodically throughout your event. It does its thing. It backs up all the data to ultrasignup.com. That way, if something happens to your device during your event, your results are not lost. Hopefully, we can restore something from the data backup. So make sure you do that regularly while your event is happening. Back to tools, the last option is new reset race. That takes you back to this screen where you can enter a new code when it's time to time a different event. <laughs> um, and if you end up on this screen by mistake, you can click on continue with your current code and that will bring you back here where all your recorded data is and you won't lose anything unless you hit new reset and re-enter the code. That'll wipe all of your data out. So back up to the menu, let's go into settings your options here are live publish and speaker if you enable these settings live publish is connected to your live tracking so if you choose to use that feature uh, then you'll want to enable this box so that you can utilize the live last through report and then um, the speaker which I'm casting, so my speaker's not going to work. Uh, but if you enable this, every time you key in a runner, their name is going to be announced. The last item in the menu is help. And that brings you to this screen where you can see your, your latest or the version that you're running. Um, 
the version of the Ultra Sign Up timing app that you're running. Uh, you can also get to the contact page or a user guide from this screen. So if we go back to the menu and we click on results, from this screen you're actually going to have a different menu. So if we click on the menu here, you have a new set of options. So publish results, obviously, uh, if you select that, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to publish these results, yes or no? If we click yes, it should take just a couple of seconds and then it should say manual add published. And then let's go back to the menu. The next item is, okay, the next item is PDF results. So if you'd like to um, send a copy of the results to anyone or yourself, you can select this option, click um, the share button in the top right corner of the screen, and you can email your PDF results to anyone you would like. Um, the next option in the menu is live results. So this is going to redirect you. Obviously, you would have to have a data or Wi-Fi connection to be able to be re redirected to this page. But um, if you click on live results, that's going to send you to your live tracking in Ultra Sign Up. Uh, if we click on live standings, you can see the times that have been recorded here. And you can share this link with others um, so that they're able to watch the progress of their runner um, throughout the event. The next option is live scrolling. So this is just another screen where you can see the results that you have uh, recorded in the event. And the last option is delete results, which we really never want to use that. Um, yeah, there's really no reason to use that option. Unless you're testing before the event and you just want, and you're tapping a few bibs and then you just want to clear everyone out at once. So as you can see, there are tons of features in the application. So please, please, please take the time to review the tutorials available at help.ultrasignup.com. Um, I discuss how to use each feature, the race day guide um, that you'll find here, as well as the race prep guide, go over some of the common mistakes uh, that are made when using the, the timing app. So I encourage you to read through those. Uh, there are also, there's also a guide for testing the app as I went over kind of earlier in the video. Um, so please, please take a look. And as always, please contact the Ultra Sign Up team with any questions that you have regarding uh, timing. I hope you guys have enjoyed the overview and take care.